Hello everyone. As part of a series of video lectures on mining machinery, uh, I'm uh, in mining machinery. In this video lecture, I'm going to cover uh, the uh, what do you call, the content of chapter two, and it is uh, part one of uh, chapter two. Okay, and uh, these video lectures are meant for uh, for the students who are studying a diploma in mining engineering. So let's recap. Uh, like what I had uh, covered in the last. Uh, video lecture like let's recap like in the last video lecture we had, we discussed about classification of different types of coal cutting machines uh, and what are the different types of coal cutting machines uh, that will be used in underground mines depending on the uh, various uh, mining conditions okay or various uh, what do you call the or uh, the same conditions basically if the what is the in case of short wall right it's a short wall coal cutting and in case of it is of the width of the coal is width and the length of the coal is uh, larger one then we'll go for what you call the long wall machine and again in long wall again there are two types uh, one is called the single ended ranging drum shearer and the double ended ranging drum shearer uh, those are all comes under the uh, what you call the coal cutting machines okay and what are the we also discussed about what are the various applications of coal cutting machines under various uh, mining conditions okay and in order to carry out the what you call the mining activity using coal cutting machines uh, we require what uh, what you call for the transportation of the coal right uh, we require power supports okay so what are the then uh, we discussed about what are the different types of power loaders uh, power loaders that are used in underground uh, in underground coal mines okay there are like different types of power loaders that are being used in underground coal mines they are of what you call one is uh, lhst nothing but l load haul and dumper and the second one is sdl side discharge loader and uh, then we also discussed about uh, the vertical the, the uh, road headers that are used uh, which are basically used uh, for the drivage of the roadways during development of long wall panel okay then we discussed about the principle of working of rocker shovel and you know their applicability basically the rocker shovel uh, is the kind of loading machine which is being used in metalliferous mines because you know like it will load the material and uh, what do you call it will unload the material on its back end of it so that is the reason the height of the roadway it requires is more so it is more popular loading machine in case of metalliferous mines then we also discussed about uh, the continuous miner joy continuous miner joy continuous miner is a kind of what you call the coal cutting machine which basically used you know for the drivage of the roadways and the, for the extraction of the seams okay apart from the theoretical concepts in the last video lecture we also discussed about their what do you call the uh, uh, field applicability how exactly is each machine works in the field okay and how what is the what are the various components of the different machines and uh, their uh, field application and uh, what are the different operations involved uh, different operations involved uh, during operation of each individual machine okay so from the what you call the practical point of view uh, we discussed the what uh, the operation of the uh, various kind of loading machines and in the cutting machines in the previous video lecture so let's move on uh, as part of this video lecture i am going to cover the following topics basically uh, this video in a video lecture is basically meant for because it comes under chapter 2 uh, as per chapter 2 of the curriculum which basically contains uh, the long wall machinery okay so in this video lecture i am going to cover what are the different types of uh, what do you call the machinery used in long wall mining and uh, next uh, we'll discuss about uh, what do you call the what are the selection criteria of, uh, based on what criteria the power supports are selected then uh, the in detail discussion about uh, what do you call the, we are going to discuss in detail about the power supports that are being used uh, in long wall mining and uh, next construction details of uh, afc like it is a kind of loading machine used along the long wall face when the coal is being cut by the shearer okay armored face conveyor or armored flexible conveyor then i like uh, in that again you know we'll be discussing in detail about what are the different types of afc and that and that they are what, again the broadly categorized uh, based on two types one is called uh, what you call the based on attachment of chains to the flight bars they are further subdivided into twin inboard afc and twin outboard afc then uh, again the based on what you call the types of afc pan like whether the what are the pan that will be the that is being part of the afc okay if it is bottom is closed it is known as bottom closed afc if the bottom of the pan is opened then it is known as bottom opened afc so as part of video lecture i'll try to cover all these points and uh, not only from the theoretical point of view but also from the what you call the field application point of view okay 
let's say what now let us discuss what are the machinery that are being used in uh, long wall phase okay the machinery used for the extraction of the coal from the long wall phase are of the following types first one is the chalk shield supports okay the what are the machinery the first one is the chalk shield support second one is uh, what you call chalk shield is uh, supports are basically used for effective strata control all along the length of the long wall panel second one is shearer to cut the coal okay there are two types of shearers one is called single ended ranging drum shearer because uh, this we'll discuss again in detail because uh, single ended ranging drum shearer as the term itself indicates what it contains only single cutting drum if the vertical the length of the panel is small and only vertical which can be cut or which can be extracted only is using single drum then in such a situation we will use single ended ranging drum shearer if the length of the panel is more then it requires what you call the, the let us say it is more than 100 meters or 150 meters then we it requires the what you call the uh, two drums to cut uh, to extract the entire uh, what you call the length of the coal seam in such a situations uh, we would uh, will prefer the double ended ranging drum shearer that is known as derds dirds dirds is nothing but double ended ranging drum shearer okay next uh, these are all the support types and this is a cutting machine next what you call the transportation system like what you call the you have to transport the coal uh, cut by the shearer from the long wall panel okay the conveyor or the, the conveyor the transporting system that is being used is of afc that is nothing but armored face conveyor or it is also known as armored flexible conveyor it is also known as armored flexible conveyor okay next based on the type of afc pans okay because they are again afc are further categorized broadly categorized into following uh, what you call two types and again they are further subdivided into two one is what you call the what you call based on the type of the afc pans like because afc consists of number of pans which we will discuss you know uh, in detail in the coming slides okay so based on the each uh, uh, afc consists of number of pans which are joined together okay which provides you know what you call the some kind of articulated joint which provides some kind of flexibility that's why it is known as armored flexible conveyor okay now based on the pan right what kind of what type of pan which will be using if it is of the if it is bottom closed then it is known as if the bottom of the pan is closed then it is known as bottom closed afc if the bottom of the pan is open then it is known as bottom open afc next based on the placement of chains or attachment of chains to the flight bars okay uh, and let me correct this uh, one second uh. light bars of afc so this is what it is so based on the placement of chains to the uh, uh, or attachment of chains to the now how the flight bars are attached uh, how the chains are attached uh, to the flight bars Uh, okay based on that it is fin inboard nothing but the both the chains are present uh, vertical at the center of the flight bar uh, then uh, then it is known as fin inboard afc if the bones are both the chains are attached to the ends of the flight bar then it is then the afc is known as fin outboard afc this uh, we will we'll discuss again in detail in the coming slides okay then the other type of uh, the remaining machinery the equipment required in the for the to carry out the mining activity along a long wall panel is lump breaker lump breaker is nothing but let's say in during extraction right whatever the uh, coal cut by the shearer if there are if it uh, what you suddenly if there are some boulders or lumps uh, boulders you know uh, that fall right during uh, cutting uh, activity right if there are some boulders are present okay they have to be crushed so in order to what is the cut uh, what you call the crushed boulders that uh, that got extracted during the uh, while cutting of the uh, face using uh, using shearer okay the lump breaker is used okay next one is <coughs> power pack power pack is nothing but because you know in order to support all along the length of the long one panel we will be using chalk shield support which are basically operated by means of hydraulically which are basically operated hydraulically so all the supports right has to be set to the required height you know and they should carrying the load 
So in order to inject the required hydraulic fluid, right? A hydraulic fluid at a required pressure. So uh, two different uh, what do you call the chalk shields, right? Chalk shields of the base equipment. Okay, we'll be using power pack. Okay, we'll be using power pack. Anyway, we'll discuss you know our uh, the construction details of each and every machinery, whatever the outline machines that are outlined here. Okay, we'll be discussing uh, what do you call the in detail in the uh, upcoming. Uh, uh, a few of them as part of this video lecture and uh, remaining or uh, you know in the next coming video lectures okay let's uh, let's move on now what are the factors basically because we discuss uh, like what are, called, what are the different types different missions that requires to carry out the mining activity all along the long wall panel next what are the factors basically because one of the equipment that is being used is what the chalk shield support right now there are different types of supports Okay, chalk shield supports. So, what are the factors based on which we can choose the variety of the power support now? So, the factors influencing selection of power support is it is based on depth of the deposit. Second one is length of the long wall panel. Third one is inclination of the seam. Fourth one is height or thickness of the seam. And fifth one, fifth uh, fifth property, fifth factor is properties of overlying strata. So if the depth, depth of the seam, uh, seam is more, definitely uh, what do you call, uh, the amount of overbinding, over, what do you call, overlying strata pressure acting on the face will be more. So accordingly, what do you call the, the, uh, the type of the power support or the capacity of the power support we need to choose. Next one, length of the long wall panel. Because if the length of the long wall panel is more, definitely, uh, definitely the number of power support requests will be more. So we cannot choose the you know, so what you call the smaller width, width of uh, what you call the power supports because it requires more number of power supports, right? So the capacity and you know its dimension depends on the length of the long wall panel as well. And the third one is the inclination of the seam. What would be the inclination of the seam, whether it is a flat deposit or the mild inclined deposit? Generally, in case the long wall mining is being adapted in case of what you call the flat to mild inclined deposit, okay? In the long, uh, because you know, uh, but otherwise, in the power supports, we cannot, they cannot what call, sustain on their own in case of steeply inclined deposit, right? So they cannot withstand on their own. So the, uh, the applicability of the long wall mining itself indicates what, uh, what uh, the, it is applicable in case of flat to moderately inclined deposits. So that is the reason, you know, inclination of the seam is another factor. And height and thickness of the deposit, because up to or uh, let's say if, if it is of higher th uh, thickness is more than three meters, right? Then the height to which the long wall power has to be extended uh, is uh, will be more. So in such a situation, right, we need to choose the different types of power support. So that is the reason the height or the thickness of the seam, height of extraction or the thickness of the seam uh, is also another important parameter. The last one is properties of overlying strata. What type of property, uh, what you call overlying strata is present, whether it is of sandstone, or shale or what kind of thing and how much pressure it might exert on the uh, on the chalk shield support. So these are all the different parameters which basically influence the type of the uh, what they call uh, what um, to choose the type of power support. Next, the, the power supports are classified into following types. Okay, these are all the what you call the right from uh, what you call right. These are uh, most of them are legacy legacy systems, okay, which were vertical invented quite long time. Now they are outdated. The most uh, one of a recent one that is being used is chalk shield support, okay. So let's say, what are the different types of power supports, okay, that are being used, okay, in uh, in underground mines? One is bar support, it's a kind of bar. Second one is what's so a frame support, and the th this kind of what called the gradual development of power supports. This hierarchy itself shows, you know, how the what the development of power supports took place. Okay, first one is what the bar supports. Second one is frame support, and the third one is shield support because we provide some kind of shield, uh, okay, uh, to protect the uh, workings, okay, from falling of material from the gof area towards uh, towards face. Okay, shield support, and the fourth one is what. Chalk support and the fifth one and the fifth one is chalk shield support. So the one uh, the type of support the what you call the uh, power support uh, that is being used in long wall mining in recent times is chalk shield support. Okay, these are all the different types of supports. Next, let us see uh, from the field point of view how exactly each support looks like. Let me explain this. Okay, this is made of caterpillar. Okay, 
I just for the explanation purpose, look at here. Just let us get some idea. Like because these are all the kind of in factory installation. It's not uh, you know that is the reason you know their uh, vertical the diagram is quite clear. Okay, if you look at here, okay, this this is uh, what you call hydraulic power support. This part, the one which we are looking at. Okay, now the whatever the top portion which is there which will carry the load that is known as canopy. Okay, and these are all the hydraulic legs. See here, one. Two, total three three types of chocks right three three are there three chuck shield supports here set of three okay so these are all called hydraulic legs now okay which basically we have called to carry the load which basically carry the load okay and next one this is called go shield this is called go shield because if in case any material falls okay during extraction of this one towards the working side it will protect the workings or if it will safeguard the working that is why it is called go shield Next one, there is another one that is called laminate link. I forgot to add here. Okay, this here there will be some kind of link, which basically used what you call for the vertical movement. Suppose let's say if the width if the seam is uh, let me okay something here. I just forgot it. Let me add it here. Okay, yeah, this one. Okay, the one which you are seeing. This is known as it come in the. This is known as laminate link. Laminate link. So this laminate link, if you look at here, right? This laminate link. Okay, it is being used for the vertical movement of power support because our power supports can be vertical lowered or raised to required height. So that is the reason this link is called or what you call laminate link. Okay, so one is uh, let me reiterate. One is uh, the top one is this is called canopy. Next one is uh, let me use this with color red. Okay, this is canopy, and next one this is laminate link, which is used for the vertical movement. And these are all what you call hydraulic legs. Next one is uh, okay. Now the front portion. Okay, now the front and this is gov sheet. Sorry, I forgot this. This is gov sheet. Okay, which is basically protect the workings uh, from uh, any material falling from go area towards the working. It is just to make what, what you call uh, uh, the workings are very safe, right? Uh, safe, you know, to create the safe working environment. For that purpose, you know, we'll be using go sheet. Next one is this is the one which is attached, okay, to the front uh, front of the what you call the chalk shield support. This is base. This part is base. Yeah, it has been written. This is base. This portion, which is a kind of what kind of what you call uh, this is called it is not one right uh, this is something there is some particular name okay I'll tell whenever I recollect this okay now the front portion okay the front portion it is being attached to the this is called this is called the center portion let me draw this yeah the center part the center portion okay this is called yeah this is known as afc this portion this is called afc look at here the afc this is the one which is used vertical to transport the coal okay this is where the afc is being placed placement of afc this is for this portion is being used for the moment of uh, what you call the afc basically afc can be traveled here it contains some kind of what you call rack and pinion kind of arrangement, racket rack arrangement, let us say. Okay, so it is this basically used for the moment of what you call uh, for hauling uh, moment of a uh, shear. Okay, now this is AFC. AFC consists of a sigma section. Look at here why it is called sigma because it contains something like this, right? Look at here. This is a kind of sigma, right? So, mathematical uh, in mathematics, we'll call this as sigma, right? So that is why it is called sigma section. It consists of sigma section. In this case, the bottom is closed. That's why it is called bottom closed AFC. And these are all called flight bars. These are all called flight bars. Look at here. This one. This is called flight bar. Right? These are all called flight bar. Okay. Next one, these are all called the chains, which are attached to the uh, without attached to the flight bar because these chains will be moving 
anyway i'll show you in the next uh, coming slides uh, very clearly and if the, in this case these two chains are attached in the middle that's why it is called they are called twin inboard twin means both two they are inside inboard inboard means they are in a what you call they are attached to the flight flight uh, flight bars inside right inside of the pan that's why they are called twin inboard okay and this is called this is very important uh, because the shearer is mounted on it will be placed on uh, what you call afc okay so this one this is called racket track arrangement which is basically used for the moment of racket let me choose red color okay racket track arrangement racket track arrangement that's what it is. so this is of racket track arrangement which is basically used for the moment of which is basically used for the moment of shear okay i hope uh, this is very clear right okay let's uh, let's move on we'll discuss more uh, there are more uh, drawings uh, okay let's see uh, take this okay yeah this is another same thing this is again the diagram of uh, what you call the chalk seeds in the field it is earlier it was in the factory now it is in the field right look at here this is a canopy canopy is nothing but uh, which basically carry the load right what are the load that is acting on top of it okay see these are the load right which is which are acting uh, which are acting like this right so it is it is being acting on the canopy so that's why okay this is called extension bar extension bar is nothing but i'll uh, anyway we'll explain this i'll explain in the coming uh, slide uh, okay what are the what is this is canopy okay and uh, extension bar is nothing but if let us say certain portion of the what you call the coal is being cut by the shearer then immediately the support has to be advanced but it will take uh, there is a sequential process uh, involved in, uh, for the advancement of the power support in such a situation what are the roof that got exposed right okay between the seam between the seam and uh, between the face and the what you call the end uh, edge of the or the end of the canopy right it has to be supported so for that purpose there is an extra provision that is being made so that you know it can be extended extended up to so that it to uh, to provide a support uh, support to the freshly exposed roof and the uh, what you call when the what you call uh, during advancement of power support this extension bar bar will be taken back and the what you call the support will be advanced so extension bar is a kind of what you call kind of temporary support uh, okay to uh, to provide a temporary support kind of thing for a freshly exposed surface okay before advanced freshly exposed roof sorry freshly exposed roof okay before advancement of this power support so before it advances right it be, since it involves some cyclic operation till that time you know it should not be exposed so it has to be supported temporarily or immediately right so in order to support the freshly exposed roof immediately we'll be using extension bar okay so next one is uh, this is of gof shield gof shield is nothing but what are the material that falls toward this right this uh, like this okay it will be this area will be shielded next this is called lamin scaling this portion guys right? yeah because because of this link only okay because of this link whatever we are seeing here right let me show this yeah this part okay so because of this part okay it won't be moving okay this part right this is called lamin scaled link with this only bucket what happens the vertical movement okay because let's say if the in this case uh, the uh, what do you call the height of the roadway is height of the vertical the seam or the thickness of the seam to be extracted this one suppose if it is a bigger one then what happens i need to what do you call suppose let's say it is of this much then this has to be moved in the vertical movement right it requires a vertical movement it has to be extended right so in such a situation to provide the vertical movement of the chalk shield support the lamin scale link will be used so this is very very important from the entrance uh, inter, not only entrance from the examination point of view what is the purpose of lamin scale link basically the lamin scale link is used what for the vertical movement of the uh, chalk shield support or the power support so that in case of what you call the what you call the uh, thickness of the seam increases the power support can be raised to a suitable height so that's what exactly the purpose of lamin scale link and next one is uh, this is the base of the power support this one uh sorry okay next one this is what you call double acting piston 
this is called deblacting piston which is used for the advancement of afc as well as for the advancement of power support this is that's why anyway we'll discuss in detail about how exactly uh, when, uh, during uh, what you call the uh, while discussing uh, the principle of operation of uh, what the shearer and how the what you call the uh, the mining activity is being carried out uh, along the long wall panel during that time you know we will uh, we'll discuss about this in detail like how exactly the double acting piston will operate okay next one this is afc pads right of sigma section okay sigma section of afc and there is a triangular section so what is the purpose of triangular section whenever let's say this advancement takes place right if there is any coal present here in this location if any coal is present here okay during its advancement during its advancement so whatever the material that was present here it will be loaded into this am i right it will be it will be loaded into this so it will automatically scoops the material so that you know this material will comes onto the afc and as a result it will be transported to the other end that's what exactly the purpose of this. okay this is a tubular section which basically to accommodate which basically to meant for to place all the cables okay that are attached to the that are connected to, connected to the afc because you know afc uh, sorry that are connected to the shearer okay because shearer contains number of motors in that okay so it uh, which are operated electrically uh, around uh, what you call 3.3 kv voltage you can think of it you know how big machinery it is going to be so what are the cables required right uh, for to uh, provide required power supply all the cables will be placed in the tubular section that's what exactly the purpose of okay we discussed about extension bar this okay hydraulic legs obviously these legs are used what uh, to uh, to carry the load whatever the load that is being uh, that is acting on the canopy okay and it also used what you call to raise the what you call the chassis support to the required height okay uh, what else we have and this is about the base okay this is about uh, this diagram uh, let us see let me clear everything and move on okay now we just uh, diagrammatically have explained let us see theoretically what exactly the things are okay construction details of chuck shield support okay the following are important components of power support power supports are also known as chuck shield support okay what are the components now canopy canopy is nothing but what the one which is present on the top and which actually carries the load that is called canopy second one is what gof shield this is called gof shield gof shield is nothing but if any material falls from the what you call the excavated area towards the working face right the working face has to be shielded gof is nothing but you know right the excavated area is known as gof and any material falls from the gof area towards the working that is known as gof shield next one is lamin skate link so which basically meant for what you call the vertical movement of the machinery extension bar is basically to support the freshly exposed roof okay till the advancement of the power support once the power support extra uh, what you call advanced right yeah, there uh, they will be withdrawn extension bar will be withdrawn face frag and face guard so this face frag or face guard is being used suppose let us say the face is being cut by the shearer uh, let me check okay, let me take this okay let us say uh, this is what your face assume this is your face so this is how it is this is your face okay now let's say this much thick is being uh, thickness this much coal thickness coal is being cut by the shear this much portion this is being cut by the shear this this portion okay it is being cut so during cutting process what happens sometimes no uh, some big boulders automatically might fall they will collapse and fall onto the afc so we cannot uh, transport the boulders as it is right uh, uh, into the surface it, they have to be broken down so in order to because it, temporarily it has to be stopped then later it will fall down right so to make the working progress right so for that purpose the face frag or face guard or, uh, guard is used okay let us see look at here canopy it is used to support the overlying strata all along the face okay the second one is uh, what a gof shield it is used to prevent the working place from uh, material falling from the gof side okay working phase from material falling from material caving or falling caving means which collapse right from gof side and also shield gof material and also shielding 
gop material behind the chalk sheet so that you know it won't come towards the working faces next laminate link it is used to keep the canopy in uniform horizontal position while lowering and raising of the uh, chalk sheet okay so that is nothing but what it is used for the vertical movement of chalk sheet support so that's what exactly okay so let's move on this uh, anyway i already explained this okay let's move on okay right next one is extension bar it is used to support the freshly exposed roof cut by the shearer before advancement of power support okay what are the freshly exposed roof is there right since uh, as i as i told as i told uh, what do you call the advancement of power supply uh, power supports involves a sequential operation like you know there is a systematic process uh, involved for the to carry out the advancement of power support right so what are the freshly exposed roof i mean nothing but the thickness of certain portion is being cut by the shear so that particular portion roof will be exposed right so it has to be supported till the advancement of power support so in order to support the freshly exposed roof cut by the shear before advancement of power support we will be using a extension bar so the extension bar which attached to the canopy can be taken back at the time of advancement of it can be withdrawn and the power support can be advanced next as i said right uh, face frag or face guard it is used to protect the workings working face from any big boulders falling from the face toward the workings because you know uh, what you call during cutting process right sometimes you due to whatever the due to some cracks or some geological disturbances actually the face has to be cut up to the required whatever thickness the uh, shearer is being uh, is uh, what you call is being cut but sometimes what happen right due to presence of uh, some geological disturbances some big boulders will fall on the afc during the cutting process okay so to, to in order to what you call like, carry out the mining activity without any much disturbance okay uh, the face frags are used okay it is used to protect the working face from any big boulders falling from the face toward the working right next uh, basically for the operation of chalk shield support right we will be using they are operated hydraulically now uh, what would be the uh, what will be the composition of hydraulic fluid used in the power support so the composition of hydraulic fluid used in power supports is 95% water and 5% oil 95% water and 5% oil okay so let's move on now so that is about uh, what you call the power supports okay now let us discuss about the power pack okay power pack and its construction details because power packs are basically because all the chuck shield supports all the chuck shield supports are operated hydraulically and the required hydraulic fluid which is a composition of what 90% oil water and 5% oil hydraulic oil oil okay so with that composition the fluid material the fluid hydraulic fluid at a required pressure has to be supplied to the what you call the all uh, chalk shield uh, chalk shields right so uh, for that purpose we will be using power pack okay let us discuss uh, what is power pack and its construction details so the main purpose of power pack is to set hydraulic supports okay the setting load expressed in tons per square meter or tons per square meter uh, square feet okay loading is determined by hydraulic pressure applied to the support right so what are the, at what the pressure you know hydraulic pressure is supplied based on that only we can estimate the capacity of the support right it will get gives a reading like you know uh, while what you call uh, it's something like what uh, uh, right in what are the vehicles that we will be using right uh, will be uh, uh, what you call uh, the air pressure is applied into the tubes of the tires right at certain pressure okay based on that only we will see like you know how much load you know it can carry whether the Uh, what you call the air pressure is proper or not in the tires right in the same way like while applying the hydraulic pressure itself we can uh, we can de determine like you know how at what pressure the hydraulic pressure is being uh, uh, is being supplied to the uh, is supplied to the have uh, chalk sheets uh, chalk sheets so that we can estimate their loading uh, what you, loading uh, what you call the bearing capacity okay the loading is determined by hydraulic pressure applied to the supports with the size and the number of uh, support legs and the area uh, area over the support okay based on that is based on this only the loading will be uh, loading will be determined next nominal setting pressure of the support is determined by setting the because using power pack only we will determine all this okay that is where the we will be getting the reading 
whenever you put that uh, put that particular nozzle to the what is called the valve of uh, what is called the chuckshill support or hydraulic leg of chuckshill support right we will be getting the corresponding reading those readings will determine what exactly the setting loading and what exactly the max of its capacity at that particular instant how much load will be acting on the power support those those parameters we can determine okay using uh, the readings taken uh, uh, what is called for using power pack next nominal setting pressure of the power support of the support is determined by setting the uh, setting up unloading valve of the power pack okay next the setting load is the resistance offered by the power support to the roof starter follow up to 200 liters per minute pump and pressure and uh, and pressure of what 4 400 bars available and necessary uh, what exactly the power pack contains it can supply the uh, what is called hydraulic fluid of uh, at a rate of how much 200 liters per minute per pump and a pressure of it a pressure of how much 400 bars are available and the necessary motor capacity what, how much should be the capacity of the motor uh, for the complete power pack one second it's more for the complete power pack are uh, 10 to 110 kilonewton so let's move on uh, next so these are all the what you call the uh, different uh, what you call the valves that are part of power pack ring main system so hydraulic fluid is supplied in the phase uh, by in intake hose pipe but due to leakage frictional resistance obstacle in the various tapping point supply pressure drastically lower lowest down in the support situated in the extreme end because uh, this power pack will be present at one end and you are let's say the power support is present on the extreme end of it right so the what are the pressure it is supposed to be supply the fluid right it may not be the uh, it might not be the same therefore the, therefore this system termed as the ring main system developed in which each intake as well as the return lines are split in two parts that's what it is saying so the power, hydraulic power pack contains uh, what you call the ring main system okay because uh, we are discussing the construction details as well right ring main system okay, developed in which the intake as well as the return lines are split in two parts the fluid is supplied in the phase or fluid in the return return to the tank from the other end so because both are different both are different lines okay so that you know like what you call without any difficulty we can uh, supply the required pressure okay this shifts of the maximum pressure loss point from the extreme end of power support to the middle of the phase okay the overall pressure loss in the whole system is drastically reduced using what ring main system is up okay you reduced good stuff okay and the ring main system is applicable for a single length hose travel of around how much 300 meters length if the parallel is of length up to 300 meters we can use this kind of system so this is a system you know what you call uh, that is being uh, that is being uh, used in power pack Okay, ring main system. Next one, what are the different valves? We uh, valves present in the power pack. Okay, one is yield valve. Basically, what is the yield load? We will be knowing, right? Incorporates the hydraulic circuit to maintain the constant hydraulic pressure in the legs of power support. Next, unloaded valve. Because you know the power support has to be lowered and you know it has to be supported, it has to be what you call advanced, then it has to be set it back, right? So it limits the system pressure to uh, preset value permitting the pump to input at a constant rate operating at the minimum load because during loading we'll be using what call while withdrawing right or while what call during advancement right whenever the power support is lowered that time you know it, this will be used. next accumulator okay uh, it is incorporated in the hydraulic circuit to increase the capacity of hydraulic system and minimize the frequency of operation of unloader valve so so that it will it is basically used to adjust the pressure hydraulic pressure next check valve it incorporates in the hydraulic circuit to control the direction flow of the pressurized fluid okay that's what the place next bleed valve bleed valve is attached in the leg circuit to facilitate the legs to come down by small amount by bleeding a little amount of fluid in the in case of sudden rise in the loads over the power power support this is very 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 important what is bleed valve now so bleed valve is attached to the leg circuits to facilitate legs because whenever the load i think it is about to yield right so that time instead of failing right it, it should give some kind of indication so that indication is being given provided by bleed valve the bleed valves attached to the 
leg circuits to facilitate the legs come down by small amount by bleeding a little amount of fluid in the in case of sudden rise in loads over the power supports so that's what next rapid yield wall so ordinary type uh, yield walls are normally slow in reaction allows the release of flow rate of around 30 liters per minute so this you can quickly what you call the unload and what you call uh, what you call you can what you call lower it down lower it down and you can advance it then you can set it so in such a situation you will be using rapid yield wall next guarantee set wall the power support achieve normal setting pressure either when the operator shut off the control wall permanently or uh, when the multiple demand situation results in low setting pressure hence it automatically top up the leg pressure on supplying uh, on the sub on the supply system reduces so it basically guarantees at what pressure the required pre required pressure has to be supplied to the hydra uh, to the hydraulic power supports so these are all the different types of what you call okay these are all very important bleed wall check wall accumulator unload wall yield wall okay and a ring main system and how what exactly the purpose of power pack okay these are all very important from the examination point of view and these question different operation of different types of what exactly the purpose of accumulator what is the purpose of bleed wall okay and unload wall so these questions you might uh, that uh, might appear in the examination so you need to concentrate on this okay and again uh, this is again i'm uh, what you call the line, another diagram of the chalk shield support uh, which is a make of joy joy is one of the international uh, what you call the company okay basically right this is the canopy uh, this is what the gof shield uh, this is where laminate link and this is the base base is of what yeah it has, uh, this was skid mounted skid is nothing but see it is some kind of what you call the curved kind of thing here that's why it is called skid mounted so during advancement why it is skid mounted because during advancement right it will not penetrate into the look at here let me draw this uh, one second on, okay this one this is of skid mounted like this it is of triangular kind of thing right so this is what it is so during advancement of support right it will not penetrate into the it won't go like this right it won't go inside it it will what you can simply drag it and it will move like this right so so during advancement of power support in order to not to penetrate into the floor right the base of the uh, power support is of skid mounted and this is some kind of triangular section if you look at here this is kind of some kind of triangle kind of thing here sometimes what happen right, to this to this portion some triangular portion will be attached okay that is not present here so that whatever the material that is present right it will automatically what is scoop the material and that will be placed onto the afc okay so this is what it is and the gof shield laminate link hydraulic legs base uh, this is your afc okay uh, this is what the what you call the racket track arrangement which is used for the moment of uh, for the moment of uh, shear okay this basically tubular section i told right this basically uh, what you call the to accommodate whatever the cables you know cable attachments that are required right to pro to provide required power supply to different motors of the machine right so all those cables will be accommodated in this section so that's why it is called tubular section okay this is in brief about uh, this particular diagram okay let's move on uh, sorry clear clear all yeah okay yeah this is another one look at here here it beautifully explains this guy because i am trying to focus more on uh, what you call this one look at here so this is a support this is in the field actually i have captured this image from one of the video basically look at here these are all the power support okay this is being this is the vertical the driving end of the chain conveyor okay these two are attached in the okay uh, this uh, diagram which i have captured let's see let me draw it annotate yeah this portion right if you look at this is of afc Okay, these are all the chalk shield supports. This I uh, have captured uh, from one of the video to explain more, uh, like with more clarity. So this is what exactly this one here. This is what AFC is, and uh, these are all the two chains right here. These two chains are attached. The two chains are attached in the middle. That's why they are called twin inboard AFC. 
because these these are all called flight bars these are all called flight bars if you look at here yes this is one flight bar sorry this is one flight bar okay a spin inboard spin means two spin inboard spin inboard fc that's what it is that's what it is so this is what you call the driving head of it so this is how it uh, what it works in the field hope, hope you got it uh, what exactly the twin inboard afc okay so let's move on mm, let me see this clear clear all okay let's move on whatever yeah uh, now uh, let us discuss uh, what you call so far we discussed about the construction details of power supports okay uh, let me show you this uh, bit uh, with the more clarity what you call let me show you how exactly these things uh, will work okay okay let me before that let's so let me explain this then we'll move on to that video um, okay let me maximize this yeah so afc afc is nothing but it's a kind of uh, what you call the chain conveyor that is being used in case of long wall mining for the transportation of the coal look at here these are all the various components of afc if you look at here this portion is called this is one pan of afc okay like this there are number of pans and all these pans are joined together to provide some kind of flexibility okay here it is being joined like like this right you have some kind of flexibility the uh, what called the how much it is it is going to be around six to seven degrees of rotation in either direction both directions like it, it would be something like what if the other pan that is attached right it, it might rotate like this little bit and here also like this. it is being attached like this or it might rotate in the even the other direction also it provides some kind of flexibility like this because throughout the length all the pans are attached right that's why it is called armored face conveyor or sometimes it is also known as armored flexible conveyor so this is one pan of it basically okay so this is basically meant for the track for the uh, this uh, racket track arrangement right this one this is a back plate and the which on, the, on the back of it you know there is a what you call tubular section which basically meant went for to accommodate what are the electrical cables that are required okay uh, which are meant for what to uh, to su to supply the uh, to supply the required power supply to all the machines of uh, the cutting machine okay now these are all called this is called twin chains two chains which are attached in the middle these are all called flight bar okay now you look at here this is the written chain will go through passes through this right this is one here <coughs> in this case the bottom is closed in this case this bottom portion right it is being closed that's why it is called bottom closed fc that's why it is called what bottom closed fc bottom closed fc because the bottom is closed okay anyway we'll discuss in detail like where exactly we'll be using bottom open and bottom closed what are the advantages and disadvantages and uh, their applicable conditions okay this is about uh, in brief about one pan okay so let's move on let me clear all of this okay let's move on okay what are the uh, say, what is the purpose of now see let us discuss about uh, armored face conveyor afc what is the purpose of afc now see here it is used for the transportation of the coal cut by the shearer right AFC consists of number of pans, and each pan, uh, like just now, a few minutes back we discussed, right? Each pan, right? Each one is a pan. Okay, AFC consists of number of pans, and each pan is having a length of 1.2 to 1.5 meter length, uh, length and 0.8 to 1 meter width. Okay, next. The pans are joined together so as to provide flexibility on other side, either side by 6 to 7 degrees. Okay now let us discuss what are the different components of afc so the following are the various components of armored face conveyor okay first one is sigma section triangular ramp flight bars and the flight bars are attached to the chains okay so these are all the, the four are the different components of afc okay so now let's move on now sigma section Okay, uh, like we discussed, right? Few minutes back, let me go back. Yeah, this is called sigma section. Look at here. 
this is called sigma system because it is in the shape of sigma that's why it is called sigma section okay so this is what sigma section so let's move on clear this there are okay See, sigma section the fc consists of number of sigma section spans of each length varying from 1.2 to 1.5 meter length and width of the pants is 0.8 to 1 meter next these pants are joined together which provide the flexibility of 6 to 7 degrees in either direction during its operation okay next the sigma section pants are of two types one is as a, a few minutes ago we discussed right the bottom is bottom of the pan is closed it is called bottom closed and if it is opened it is known as bottom opened afc next the bottom closed pans are used if the floor of the panel is soft because it should not penetrate into the floor during the, or its operation right so if it is if it is soft right whatever the mud material that is present on the floor it should not in the vertical penetrate into that which which might jam the chain right so which will become its operation these are all called the kind of uh, operational difficulties so the chains will be, uh, gets blocked as a result you know like it requires a lot of maintenance so in such a situation the bottom will be closed the bottom closed pans are used if the floor of the lung wall panel is soft and the afc can penetrate into the floor during its operation bottom opened afc because if it is closed right its maintenance will become difficult so if it is open right in case of any chain get, wherever the chain get damaged or in it get jammed we can uh, what you call the uh, the inspection operation can be uh, carried out very easily if the bottom bottom, pan, bottom of the pan is open so bottom open afc pans are used if the floor of the lung wall panel is of medium hard to hard that is nothing but there should not be any mud kind of material on the floor so that you know it is, since it is not soft it will not penetrate into the floor okay that's what exact the about the uh, sigma section next one triangular ramp the triangular ramp is used to collect the coal cut by the shearer present between the fc uh, between the face and afc on to afc because it has to scoop the material present between the afc and the face okay and during advancement right automatically that particular whatever the what you call the coal that is present on the floor it will be uh, scooped and you know it will be loaded onto the onto the afc that's what it is next to flight bars flight bar attached to the chains at a regular interval like uh, this is what we discussed right oh, just a minute yes uh, the, the these are called flight bars the black one okay these are all called flight bars so they are attached to the chain okay that's what the flight bars is okay let's move on flight bars are attached to the chains at a regular interval to carry the material all along the long wall face okay depending on the attachment of flight bars to the chains they are further classified into two types twin inboard and twin outboard afc okay so next one chains okay if they are attached in the middle they are called twin inboard if they are attached at the ends the ends of the flight bar that is known as twin outboard next chains are attached to the flight bars to carry the coal cut by the shearer okay because chains will be moving right so that's what it is so this is again uh, what you call yeah this is see these are all the flight this diagram again i just uh, thought of adding because it's giving a very clear uh, what you call the visual or very clear illustration of each panel right so that's what it is this is a tubular section this is the flight bar and this is what you call the racket rack arrangement this one okay for the which is basically meant for for the movement of shear this is what sigma section is and this is a kind of triangular ramp kind of thing look at here here one ramp will be attached so that you know this one and this is made of uh, the international company joy okay next one okay this is another diagram uh, like which, which is of same thing okay here it is being attached and here actually the, this particular component is not attached it but still these are all the two chains and the flight bars and the racket rack arrangement tubular section whatever it is okay this is another one okay this is what the complete assembly so if the pans are joined together this is how exactly it looks like all the pans are joined which provides some kind of flexibility here see they have joined right so they are providing this for some kind of uh, what you call a flexibility here it can know what can take some kind of bend so that's why it is called flexible conveyor okay so this is a complete assembly of it one drive head at the at this location so this is the driving head see small portion in case of this hydraulic jack is present in case if the chains get loosened right so that can be tightened using this so that's what exactly the purpose of this okay so this is about this okay uh before this uh, let me show 
I'll show this, then we'll end up with it. Okay. Let's see. Look at here. Uh, this basically, yeah. Look at here. How exactly what you call? Uh, one second, let me mute this. Look at here. Uh, those are all the vertical that is what exact this is of course uh, this is in case of uh, vertical of plow but uh, here I, I would just uh, thought of explaining this let me replace yeah how the moment of because our i'm trying to more give more emphasis on this see this is how the afc is being moving right so this is these are all the what you call the uh, supports attached to the double acting piston these are all the double acting pistons now okay this is how exactly it is being uh, vertical attached the AFC is being attached to the uh, to the uh, yeah, uh, what AFC is being attached to the uh, chalk shield supports. Okay, so we'll uh, with this uh, I'll conclude the. Uh, okay. Anyway, this we'll discuss further. This uh, I'll uh, conclude this video lecture. Thank you.